Guys, I'm almost embarrassed to say I'm just getting to take the tracks off full pull now. So if you guys ever run tracks, you know that the first time setup takes a little, it takes a little bit, right? Because you're bolting on all the brackets and stuff to the track itself. Once you got all that figured out, it's actually very, very straightforward to get it on your machine. You're basically just bolting these anti-rotation brackets onto your lower A-arms. So really, um, the backcountry tracks are a tiny bit different than say the Apache 360s, but but they are very similar. You got a freaking U-bolt there with two nuts, and then you got two uh, nuts on, on each one of the lower A-arms. Undo those four, boom. I already have the lug nuts off, the whole thing comes off. This bracket stays attached um, to the bracket, so that just stays with the track. I just zip tie them in place to keep it all together, and that's what makes it so easy uh, to change over in the spring and fall versus the first time you do it, you're setting all that up. It, it would probably take you two hours but once you got it all set up, it takes you maybe, maybe 40 minutes, maybe 10 minutes a corner. The back is, is a little different. Um, yeah, this anti-rotation bracket bolts through this uh, rectangle piece of frame. So basically you just take that out and then you have two U-bolts there and there to take out. And then obviously take your lug nuts off and the whole rear track comes off with that too. So we'll get our assassinators put back on here and we have to, have to take it for a little inaugural rip. It's been a long time since we had the tires on. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay, so for that, I just ran the bolts back in so that whole assembly can stay in there. I put anti-seize uh, in before the season and I put anti-seize on those nuts or bolts so they should be good. So I'll just bag all this stuff up and uh, zip tie it to the frame there. And then I'll just zip tie these babies up and the rear tracks are done. We just got to throw on the tires. Same thing on this side. So that'll keep the muskeg out of that hole. So should be all good. All right, easy peasy. tracks off full pull we got our assassinators back on so this is gonna be super sketch because the way they they dug the lake it just goes like this right so I started to walk it a bit and there's like two feet of just clay freaking goo so holy cow so this would be like the old water riding videos where it's super sketch so the most important thing once it starts getting up really high as long as you can jump off your quad will float at a certain height pretty much the whole council's in the water but your snorkel will still be up. That's what many people, you know, get in the habit of trying to stay on their quad and they end up sinking it. If you hop off, as long as it doesn't flip over, your quad will always float at a certain level. So <laughs> I hope I don't have to employ that tactic right now, but man, I wouldn't be surprised if I had to. So I'm gonna try coming, to cr coming down the side and I'm gonna try to skirt the edge. The middle is probably 10 or eight or 10 feet deep. So that's like no chance. X3 skimming, I was just looking at it. If we enter here, doing about 60, you could skim that way. It's going to be a little bit hard coming out, but <laughs> that'll be for another video. Okay. All right. Jonathan, what's your prediction? Is he going to make it? He's driving through. What do you think? Yes or no? <laughs> Good luck.
I got it. Oh God. Oh. I wonder what happened. Oh, it's tilting. Lucky. <laughs> yeah. Snorkels are good, they never went under, but if your quad stalls in deep water, water can come in the exhaust. So drag her out. See what we got. You need me to put the defender up here so you can pull it? And poor full pull hasn't been run for for weeks. Months almost. Poor girl, you have to pull me out so. Let's try to get her on a bit of an angle here. Definitely one of the huge hazards of water riding, as you guys know, is. <laughs> Always freaking unexpected junk, right? So we'll try to tip her up a bit more and uh, then we'll check the oil. Uh, just for shits and giggles, we'll check the air box. Air box should be good. And then uh, and then we'll try her. Only one way to find out, right? <laughs> so now what are we doing? Okay, so I'm gonna try to get it over that big branch there. Yes. And then we're gonna try to winter up, open the airbox, check that out. release the front before you lift it up. So he got pretty lucky. He didn't have any water in this machine. So he said. Oh, these RJWC caps are so tight usually. Usually you need an 18 mil socket. Everything's working against me today. Uh, yeah. Danger. If it was a stock motor, I would still just flush it and run it. But being a built mod shop motor, you got a bit of money invested in it. It's probably gonna have to get pulled, split, and cleaned properly, which is really gonna suck. Good thing it's early in the year. We'll have her back ripping in no time, but let's hope there's not a bunch of water, bunch of water that pours up. Oh. No. Is that locked? It's, that's very little. Like when it's swamped, it's like. <laughs> so. Well, it's shut off and then. That's very, very little. The the, the filter still dry. dry. So, yeah. so we're just praying. The the biggest thing is is the oil. See how the oil is. It sure seemed uh, easy with the socket, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're just weak. Yeah. Weak. So. I guess we'll drop her and uh, check the oil. It, it's probably not going to be milky yet because the motor hasn't been running. So we'll check the oil. If it looks good, um, we'll try it. It's the only way to. It's the only way to know. We'll all find out together. I hope I don't find out if I got ticks on my pants from <laughs> standing in the grass. You get any ticks yet, Jonathan? What? Did you get any ticks on you yet? Not one. Are they out? Yeah, I got one. Ah. Yeah. Thank God for uh, strong branches. <laughs> I thought that was just going to saw right through that branch. <laughs> okay. So we'll just give it a few seconds just for the oil to settle. Because we were on quite a 
quite an angle there. So, and then we'll check the oil together and we'll figure out and then we'll try to freaking start her, man. Okay. Check it out. So what are we looking for? We're looking for just nice looking oil. Oh, it's not gonna pour out or anything. No, if it was full of water, like that. I've seen that before. What did what did I get? I swamped that machine in Sweden. Oh yeah, that, that was just the clutch. Okay. That six by six. Oh, oil looks good, guys. But like I said, it wasn't running, so we're gonna try it. We're gonna fire it up. Okay. Oh, it'd be so awesome to get lucky. <laughs> it's not saying that there isn't. I wonder if a guy should put a slight tilt on it because there could still easily be water on the top end just because the water made it down to the bottom end doesn't mean that there's not but you'll know right away i'll just get ready on the kill switch because if it starts real like you know that it's okay ready jonathan ready yeah okay <laughs> She's the, the top end's full. So now what we gotta do is we gotta pull the spark plugs, cycle it. We're probably gonna we're kind of probably gonna be we're probably gonna be doing a few oil changes and then we're probably gonna be man. I'm telling you, swamping a bike. I've never done it. I've seen it done. I've helped it lots, and it is just the biggest pain in the arse. So pull the plugs, turn over, shoots the water out of the top end, and then and then you could start it. Well, wow, what do you do, right? Spray it with WD-40, put the plugs back in, pull the motor probably. Cause she's, she's, she's full, so. Well, this, make... this girl right here will pull you back. Yeah, I'm gonna make a quick call to Blackie, see what he thinks, but I'm sure he'll agree with me. Pull the plugs, try to get the water out, spray it with WD-40, put the plugs back in and pull that motor and split it. It's right. only however many hours labor. It's not too bad, a gasket set, as long as the gasket set's available. Shouldn't be too, too bad, okay. Jonathan, it's the toe of shame. I've, I've, I've pulled lots of people on toes of shame. Not too often have I been towed in the pull of shame. But if I have been, it's usually Mrs. Austin towing me. <laughs> oh goodness, guys. So, it's really, really brutal, guys, I'm telling you. It happens, I know it happens quite often, but you guys that have went through it, you know what I'm talking about. It is, it is a straight up freaking hassle when you swamp a machine. So yeah, I'm gonna pull the plugs, uh, try to drain out the top end, spray in WD-40, put the plugs back in just so you don't get a bunch of air in there because the air and moisture causes rust. WD-40 is to get the moisture out and uh, just so we have no rust or pitting or anything like that. So it'll be a simple split and clean instead of a split, clean, rebuild. <laughs> so it'll be much cheaper for sure. So, like I said, if it was a stock motor, I would do some oil changes and I, and I would freaking send it. So, but being a built motor, it's probably better to play the safe route. Perfect. Okay, let's get these freaking plugs out. So, the one spark plug is really easy to get at the one side. You just pull the side panel off. The one on this side, it's 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 in the middle of the bike, so it's kind of hard to get. So you got to take the one piece of heat shield off there, and then uh, your kind of drain tubes and stuff. Kind of everything's in the way. <laughs> so, but I got to it. It helps with some really long neck needle nose, and you can pull the plug boots off. Oh, pull the there. plug boots off easy and stuff. And these, you guys know these spark plugs. They have so many threads. It takes forever. For Sounds them like to, you're sawing. Yeah. Takes forever for them to thread out, but I just about got it here. Yeah, here's the spark plug here. Doesn't look anything yeah, like so a car little, one. Eh? Ah, yeah, it kind of does. It just has, um, you know, a special design where it has two kind of, instead of like the strap that goes underneath, it's got two. I guess it side does, ones. but it's way longer. Yeah, we have tons of threads. So got that one out. Didn't look wet, but that <laughs> doesn't mean nothing. I'm trying to look for any good signs here. Well, if it didn't start, there's something wrong. Yeah, it's definitely, like you'll see, you've probably never seen this, I've seen this quite a few times. So now I'm gonna turn it over and you're gonna see some water go flying. Where like, are we looking? You'll have to back out, you'll see. Just go back, stand back by Jonathan there. Back It'll come out of the exhaust? No, it comes out of the spark plug holes. Oh, okay. If there's lots of water on the top end. Okay.
Oh. That's a, that's a, I'm, I'm not impressed face. <laughs> Are you going to call the expert? Not saying he's going to answer, but I, I trust Blackie. He built the motor, so I totally trust him. And he's also opinion. swamped a few machines before. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he has. Yeah, he has. Yeah, for sure he has. <laughs> Hello? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm <f> my <gasps> bike. <laughs> you just said the bleep word. Oh. I sunk my bike. No. Yeah, brutal. So I was just going through the pond and I went one, one lap through and it, it was good. It was working fine. And then I came back through and it was starting to get really deep and I was just water wheeling. And you know, when you water wheelie, you're kind of brap, brap. And exactly, remember your old XFC? Oh. Uh -oh. oh no. Uh oh. This stall? Yeah. Oh. When I let off, when I, when I let off, it just cut off, just like I hit the kill switch, boom. And then of course, you know, I had a, had a, a two second little brain fart where I didn't pull the brake to start it in gear. Cause you know, if you're really quick thinking, you could maybe get lucky and start it. But I was like trying to hit the start button and I'm like, oh yeah. And by the time I tried, no, nope, too late. So we drug it out, we lifted it up um, and the water came out. There was almost nothing in the air box. But then uh, the top end was locked. We tried, no. So I pulled the plugs out, sprayed the water out. So I'm just calling to see what, what should I do. Spray WD-40, put the plugs in, pull the motor, or <laughs> oil changes and send it. <laughs> How extremely dirty was it? Um, like I went through once. Like it's, it, was, it, it was probably quite a bit of silty clay. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's... I know, hey, it's a it's a freaking gamble. It's such a gamble, man. But uh, I don't know. In the end, what are you gonna lose? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it could be everything, but I don't know. I've been lucky, knock on the wood, but. Yeah, I've like my old red one, like was swamped. <laughs> 14 and it's still he's still driving it to this oh, day. Know, like, okay, my, my kids was in tears, yeah yeah like it wasn't even just i'll fire it up now i'll put the plugs back in now that i got the top end clear i'll fire it up and i'll check the oil if the oil looks good man i'll do a couple oil changes and send it yeah, yeah i'm sure <laughs> you know, like, it, most of the time in the filter on the gen 2 airbox stops most of it oh yeah like my kids was super clean yeah, there was there was on the other side. Yeah, there was not much at all for water in the air box. It just whatever went yeah. in through the exhaust. Oh, I wish we that. Mm. okay. Just give her some WD and, and crank it over just so it's not. Yeah, exactly. Shit in there. And... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll do. Send it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks, buddy. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> be a lot of There's a lot of bleep, bleep. <laughs> Quick call to Blackie, and uh, basically he's kind of same thoughts as I am. So um, we're gonna we're gonna spray the top end with a bit, of, just a bit of WD-40. We'll crank it over with the plugs out again, and uh, then we'll put the plugs in. And now that the water's out of the top end, it's not hydro locked. It'll start. So we're just gonna run it for 10 seconds, and we'll check the oil. See if it's not real milky. I'm gonna change the oil, change the oil filter, and I'm gonna send it. So it's like it's rolling the dice. And don't take this as that's what you should do. It's it, it it can it can run for an hour or it can run for ten years and not have any trouble. It's 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 if there's a lot of grit and it gets down into your into your uh, uh, main bearings, it it can it can take those out pretty quickly. So, but if you got lucky and and you can get lucky, like I said, my 2010. Remember my red one? My cousin swamped. Like he's been driving it for ten years and. <laughs> And, and with no 
issue. So you're going to get lucky and you cannot. So I'm not telling you that this is what you should do. It's, it's, it's always your own call and it's, it's a judgment call. You never know what the right call, the right, right call is to pull it and to, and to, and to clean it hundred percent, but that's downtime and that's blah, blah, blah with the riding season just starting. So this is the, this is the option we're going to go. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to change all. We're going to send it. So thanks guys for watching the video. I'm sorry. It was a better video, but you know, crap happens riding deep water, man. I don't know if it was just uh, lower back pressure because the exhaust it, or if it was because we haven't we haven't driven it since the mountains so that's like two months it's been sitting so what i should have did is went for a good half hour rip and got a good instead of two minute rip i should have you know worked some gas through it or whatever but that's that's my bad so anyways thanks guys for watching we'll get this cleaned up and uh and we'll let you know in future episodes how we make out thanks a lot what are you gonna do okay <laughs> plugs are back in top end is clear Send it. We're looking for nice golden oil, not milk, frothy milkshake. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Yeah, my milkshake <laughs> brings all the engine builders to the engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's super gold. I think we got totally lucky. Yeah. I just want to go. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so we're I'm gonna run it for another few minutes, get a lot of heat in it get the rest of the moisture out of the exhaust and I'm gonna check the oil again but I think we got super lucky so this is just a little add-on to the video so okay this is the real end of the video okay see you guys later